Alright. Well, today you just received a new flow jet accumulator tank. This is for the dual pump system. So the original dual pump system just has one. So today I'm going to make our installation. Already started this side here. I'm going to install another one on this side. This one will be going straight to chemical tank in front for my rinsing with my BW. For those who know that, what that is, yeah, to rinse with my BW. Okay. Another thing is that um, this pump here has a fault; it doesn't come on, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you all today. I'm going to adjust and check to see if it is the pressure switch on top. If there's a problem with it, or if it's the whole entire pump that is um, faulty, right? Hopefully, it'll be the switch and we'll be move on for that and don't, and don't have to change the pump, right? So, there are four screws there, there, and two on the other side, right? So, like I said, we're scrapping this out here, take out these four bolts, and we're going to check the pressure switch. Stand by. Alright, so we have the pump dropped. Right, and this would be the pressure switch here. So what we're gonna do is bypass it and see if it is the pump comes on. Right? Here's a new pressure switch that I got. Right. Okay. Alright, well I have a tester hook up here. Alright, so this is just gonna this is a 12 volt tester. This is just to make sure that this is switch the switch works. Alright. So we're supposed to get a light here. Alright, so we have a light, so that means the switch is fine. Alright, so we have the back screwed off now. So here we're going to check to see if we get in any current. Alright, that's a yes. On the other side of the pressure switch. Oh, well look at that. No current. Alright, so that means that somewhere, be, somewhere here is a problem. Alright, because the current is not transferring over to the pressure switch. Alright, another thing I want to do is check for continuity. Right. So that means we get in there. Alright, there you go. Nothing. Alright, now I'm not sure if it's supposed to get but I'm gonna check the um the new one and see if it is we got if we get any continuity there. Alright, the next step would be to remove these two screws here. Here. Alright, so this is the old one. And this is the new one. Alright, so to avoid having to splice wires, what I'm going to do is just open this back up, uh, switch around these, put these wires onto the head of this one. Alright, right. so I have it open up now, this is the new one, this is the old one. So I'm just going to replace these wires, switch them over onto the new one. Okay, so it's switched over now, and what I'm going to do is hook it back up and run the pump and see what happens. We're supposed to get power there. So I'm just want to put in these screws first before you screw on the cap because uh, it won't be able to these screws won't be able to fit in once the cap is on right so you put these screws in first all right so we have these screws tightened up here now before we put on the cap we just want to test and make sure everything is all right now see what happens okay and we have water spring out the other end now as well all right so that's it. Um, so I guess you screw the, this head back on here, right? That goes back on there. Pump goes back up, right? Four holes in the back there. Everything in order, right? Hope you have learned something today. And for those who have purchased this system, I hope this video could be used to help you troubleshoot, troubleshoot, especially if you want a job on everything went fine point. with mine. It was your pressure switch. I got a lot of spare pump just in case, so if you shut down on a job, don't think that it's all over, right? It could just be the pressure switch. Over and out.